Let's take a look at some long division. We can do long division without a calculator, um, just the good old fashioned way here. So let's start with some vocabulary as we look at these problems. And the first thing that we need to remember is this number inside our division symbol is called the dividend, and this number outside is called the divisor. And remember, a name for our answer is the quotient when we divide. So what we're going to do just right away here is we're going to see what do I need to multiply 5 by in order to get a number that is sitting right over here. And we're just going to take it a digit at a time. So 5 doesn't go. We can't multiply anything to get uh, 3, 5 times something, no 3. But if we go to the next digit here, we've got 39. Now, 5 times 7 gets us... 35, and so what we're going to do is we're going to take 5 times 7, which is 35, and we're going to put it right below here, like so, and then we're going to subtract. Now, one note about that, this is a situation where you really want to have a good handle on your multiplication tables, because if you have to sit and think about, holy smokes, uh, what is it, how do I get a number that's... Uh, five times something to get me close to 39, eesh, that, that could give you some real trouble. So maybe just a little extra encouragement to make sure you've, you're really sharp on those multiplication tables. So then once we do that multiplication here, we've got 39 minus 35. And another piece of this is your organization. And I've seen lots of different things. Sometimes people use grids to keep these straight, draw lots of lines all that sort of stuff. Whatever works for you is perfectly fine, especially as you're starting out with these. But what we're gonna do now is we're gonna subtract. And I'm just gonna try and be real neat here. And so we have nine minus five is four, and then three minus three is zero. Now, I know I did that right because this number right here, I can't get five into that. There's, there's no fives in there to be taken. So. Um, I know that I went big enough with that 7. If you ever do the subtraction and you get a number where you can get another 5 out of there, for example, holy smokes, then we got to look back at what that number is because we maybe didn't go big enough and maybe there's a larger number that I can use there. But we're good to go here. So once we do that, then we bring down our next digits. We're going to bring down that 3 like so. And then it's the same process. 5 times what gets us a number that's close to 43? Okay, well, 5 times 7 was 35. 5 times 8 is 40. So we put an 8 up there. 8 times 5 is 40, like so. And then again, we're going to subtract. So 3 minus 0 is 3. Now, one way that we can deal with this is we could just say 78 and then R3, remainder 3. That's one way. Another way that we could deal with it is as a fraction. We could say 78, and we have 3 left over, still waiting to be divided by 5. So this could also be written as 78 and 3 fifths. A third way to deal with this would be to make it a decimal and get that decimal answer that we might like to see. So let's do that. So what we're going to do is we're just going to put a decimal here at the end of our number and a decimal here in our answer, and we're going to bring down another zero. So now we can go, well, what can I multiply 5 by to get 30? 6. So 6 times 5 is 30, and now I have 30 minus 30, which is zero. So I'm good to go. We're all set in our division. Our answer is 78.6. But again, remember, we could also have written that as 78 remainder R3. We could also have written it as 78 and 3 still to be divided by 5 or 78 and 3 fifths. Or as a decimal, right there it is. Okay. Now, let's take a look at this next one right here. And in this one, we've got a decimal already in that number. So 
we want to deal with that first of all. So let's just push that up right up here. That's what we're going to do with that decimal. Then it's very similar. We've got six. Six you can't multiply six by anything to get four, so we have to grab another digit. Six times what gets us close to 49? Well, six times eight is 48. That sounds pretty good to me. So six times eight is 48, like so. Bring it down. We're going to subtract again. Nine minus eight is one. Then I know I did it right because that's less than six. So we're good there. Then I bring down the four, and I've got 14. Okay, same story. Six times what gets us close to 14? Six times two is 12. So bring down that 12, and again we subtract. 4 minus 2 is 2. 1 minus 1 is 0. Okay, then we're not going to worry about this decimal sitting up there. That's going to show up in our answer, and so we just leave it up there. Then we bring down this 1. All right, so... 6 times what gets us close to 21? Well, 6 times 3 is 18. So we've got 18 there. Then, again, we subtract. Here we get 3. And finally, bring down this 6. And 6 times what? Close to 36? Hey, 6 times 6 is exactly 36. So we're good to go there. And 36 minus 36 is 0. So we're good. Okay? Let's take a look at this last one here. And in this case, we have a decimal in both our dividend and our divisor. So what we're going to have to do, first of all, is move that decimal place over the same number of spots. So we look at this outside one, and we've got one decimal place. We need to get rid of that. So what we're going to do is we're going to slide that over one spot in our divisor right there, and so we're going to do the same thing in our dividend. So move the divisor over one spot, dividend over one spot, like so. And really, remember that division is just a fraction, um, and fractions are just division not worked out. And we can multiply both the numerator and denominator of a fraction by any number, as long as it's the same one, top and bottom, and we're good. So that's really what we're doing here. We're just multiplying by 10 on both our number. So let's do that. We have 21 now. And let me just rewrite this so it's really clear what we've got going here. We've got 504 divided by 21. Okay, so then I've got two digits out here. 21 obviously can't multiply anything to get 5, so we got to go to 50, and we can get two 21s out of that 50. So 2 right there, 2 times 1 is 2, 2 times 2 is 4, then we subtract, and here 50 minus 42 is going to give us 8. Bring down the 4, then how many 21s in 84? Well, 4 of them. So... 4 right there, 4 times 1 is 4, and 4 times 2 is 8. Then we subtract, and we end up with 0. So our answer here is 24, okay? So if we have a decimal in our divisor, we move it over however many spots we need to in order to get rid of the decimal, and we do that same thing on the inside. It's equivalent to multiplying by whatever power of 10 we need to. If we have a situation like this, remember that we can just add a decimal and keep going. And sometimes it might stop like this. Sometimes it might keep going. You might find a repeating decimal showing up. Or we could write it with that remainder like that. Sometimes that's acceptable. Or we could write it as that fraction, something like that. Hope this video was helpful. Keep working hard on your math. You can do it.